Even in the darkest moments of history, sometimes there's at least one beacon of hope. In East St. Louis in 1917, the bell tower on True Light Baptist Church rang loud and clear, alerting neighbors danger was near. Our Ryan Henson takes us back to a contentious time in our region's history to tell the story of a church bell still ringing today. The Great Migration, a time where six million black families began leaving the Deep South in search for better jobs, less racism, and a fresh start. Between 1900 and 1910, the black population in East St. Louis tripled. By 1917, the city was divided. Blacks in the South, whites lived up North. Most comparable to sitting on a power keg. Illinois appellate judge Milton Wharton says tensions about housing, schooling, and a changing demographic were simmering. Propaganda against blacks spread. They were blamed for everything from voter fraud to a failed worker strike. On May 27th, a mob made it clear to city leaders they weren't happy with the direction of the city. Their uh, aim was to impress upon the mayor that this was a white town. We need to keep it a white town. For a month, white mobs came to black neighborhoods, shooting at families and terrorizing communities. But on the night of July 1st, right here at this intersection of 10th and Bond, neighbors responded. They shot and killed two white men. Unfortunately, they were undercover police. The next day, a white mob raised black neighborhoods. It didn't matter whether you were um, innocent. It didn't matter that you had no part in it. Uh, there were babies who were incinerated uh, in homes. I guess there was a message that black lives didn't matter, even back then. The only thing breaking the sound of violence was the bell at True Light Baptist Church, warning the city of danger. It hasn't been used in a few years, but it's still standing tall in the heart of the city. Just by the ringing of the bell, that symbolizes the church's involvement in the community. Judge Milton says a mob destroyed, burned, and killed. Many more stood by idly. Uh, that you can't be passive. To be passive is to support. To be a spectator is to encourage. There were some who stepped in to help. There were some prominent white people in 1917 to save some lives. Um, and we need to recognize that too. Timothy Chambers is a third pastor in True Light Baptist Church, 112 year history. To me, it kind of takes your breath. You're just kind of like, wow, you know, the history that's right here in this church. The urge for a better life was stronger than even the violence that occurred in 1917. In the 1950s and 60s, East St. Louis was the fourth largest city in Illinois with a thriving economy and population. Times have changed. Through the years, East St. Louis has suffered loss of industry, investment, and compassion. But there's still hope. We've got the history, but then it's how do we go, how do we go further? But I would be lying if I didn't say that true light has to rise up and do more. A church building on its past for the future. We need to be that beacon of light for this community. I'm Ryan Henson, five on your side. Historians estimate that up to 200 black people and eight white people were killed during the disturbance. Around $400,000 in property was destroyed. That's more than $8 million in today's money.